In a previous video, we saw how to make an autocomplete in HTML using jQuery in Spring Boot. We imported some jQuery libraries, and then we have this JavaScript function that is attaching to an input type with an ID of plant name, and it simply adds this autocomplete onto it. Currently, the source of the autocomplete is an endpoint name, plant names autocomplete. We know that that's an endpoint or essentially a URL that's relative to where this page is hosted because it's in quotes. If it were square brackets, it would be a local array. Nonetheless, this endpoint simply returns a JSON array. And it returns this JSON array after the user has typed at least three or more characters. Now on the back end, what we're doing is grabbing some JSON from an external source, marshalling it into a list of plant DTO objects. The only trick is that we're filtering this on the server side, and it's a server that's outside of our control. So every time the user presses a key, we have to do a network call and grab a whole lot of data, which is not ideal. So in this video, we're going to see how to essentially keep this collection in memory, at least for those first three keystrokes. Provided that those first three keystrokes don't change, we'll keep using the same collection of plants that we returned the first time and we'll filter those plants based on all the additional keys that the user presses, but we won't go out and fetch a new set of plants every time the user presses a key after the user has pressed the third key. So first of all, let's take this all plants collection and let's make it a global collection. I can either copy and paste manually or I can do a quick fix. And uh, well, in this case, let's see, let's put the cursor here on the variable. Now let's do a quick fix and let's say convert local variable to field. Now you notice that the declaration of this variable has moved to line 35, which is outside of the method. And that's what we mean by field. So we mean declaring it in a place where it's in scope for all methods, not just this method. In other words, it's going to have a longer lifetime. Previously, it would have lasted in the area that I've highlighted in blue, but now that we've made it a field, it's going to last a little bit longer. So next, let's capture this value term. Take a look at the method plant names autocomplete, and you see one of the parameters passed in is the term. Now that's given to us by jQuery. As the user is typing keys, it's going to call this endpoint, and it's going to call it with essentially a name value pair of term equals. And then after the equal sign, it's going to be whatever characters the user pressed. So this is essentially a live look at, at the user's typing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, let's say string first three characters equals term. Now we're not done yet, we have a bit more math to do, but essentially we're just taking that term and we're storing it into a, uh, a longer location. So this time I'm doing quick fix again because I want to take a local variable and promote it to a field. Uh, first time I right clicked, this time I did control one, either one will work for us. So convert local variable to field. Now with that done, let's put a little if test around here so that we only update this when that term is exactly three characters long. And that's easy to find out. So if term dot length equal equal, remember we want to do equal equal in Java, equal equal three, then we're going to update the first three characters to that term. If it's four characters, that means the user has already entered the first three characters and we already have a cached data set. Now, what's interesting is we can move this specimen service dot fetch plants, we can move that into the if test as well. Because remember, we only want to go out and fetch a new all plants collection when those first three characters have changed. After that, the collection can only shrink, not grow. Think about that. If the user enters three characters, we get a large collection. If the user enters a fourth character, it's going to be a subset of that large collection. It's not going to be more because you couldn't have those four characters without the first three. So after we get the initial collection, it's simply a matter of filtering. Now, let's go down to this for loop and let's put that filter in place. We'll simply say if plants, uh, let's say plant DTO, which is our iteration variable, dot two string, dot contains term. Now that is the up-to-date term. That's however many characters the user has entered. So we're simply looking at the two string uh, method return. And why is that? Because that's what we're adding to this collection of suggestions that we are eventually returning to our jQuery autocomplete. 
So what we're doing is we're iterating over and we're saying if this two string contains the term of however many characters the user's typed in, then we're going to go ahead and add that to the collection. Now, let's say the user backspaces and goes back to three, then we'll go fetch a new collection. The user backspaces goes back to one or two or zero. Then once the user hits three, we go ahead and get a new collection again. So let's enable this breakpoint. Let's take a look in the debugger. The debugger is engaged in Eclipse now, so we'll see the Eclipse icon light up orange as soon as the breakpoint hits. So I type E and nothing hits yet because we know we have a, a character count of three. A, nothing hits, S. S, we see the debugger lights up orange. Let's go over and take a look. So we step over and the term length, what's the term? It should be EAS and sure enough, it's EAS. That's a length of exactly three. So we save that kind of as our key or a token of what term we're searching on, what our root term is. Then we go out and do a fetch. Now this won't be a very accurate timing, but you will probably notice a little lag when I hit the play here. There we go. Just a little split second lag as it went out. It received the JSON data and it parsed it. Naturally, that takes a few cycles. Now it goes through and it says, okay, all of these will likely be added to our suggestions collection. Let me put a breakpoint down there on the suggestions and then let's run to breakpoint so we can skip over run to line. There we go, control R, run to line. And with that, we should get an idea of how many items we have in this suggestions collection. So I expand, it's probably going to be a few, even with EAS, I see at least 17 at this point. The breakpoint's still there though. Let's go ahead and allow it to play. And let's go back to our page. Now, because I'm toggling back and forth, the suggestion dropdown goes away, but trust me, it's still there, it's still working. As a matter of fact, I can turn off the debugger later and we'll, we'll confirm it is still working. Now I hit T and this is re where the real test happens. Is it going to go out and fetch a new JSON collection and parse that? Or will it return accurate results? That's the other question. So we'll debug through here and we come to the point where we say is the term equal to exactly three characters as I mouse over you see now it's east not EAS so it's four characters not three it jumps over the part where it's going out to fetch all of this JSON and now we're in the point where it's going to determine which ones qualify for the further filtered down list probably won't be the same number we saw before because instead of EAS we're now looking at EAST so that's a bit more limited so if we go through here a few times we'll likely see a few ads we might see a few that get skipped and I see a couple there yeah a couple there towards the end are getting skipped but the first few did indeed get added. Let's go ahead and put a break or put the cursor down at suggestions again, and let's do a run to line one more time. So run to line, and I will minimize or I will right size this one so that we can take a look at the variables. And this time suggestions, how many do we have? Looks like we lost one or two there. Looks like it's a bit shorter or it could just be what's displaying. But nonetheless, we can take a quick look at these variables and confirm that everything that you see has, has the word, uh, everything you see here has the word east, not just E-A-S, but east somewhere. So we see Eastern Himalayan fir, Eastern redbud, Eastern red cedar, lots of Easterns. As a matter of fact, uh, they all have Eastern or East. Th okay, this is one finally that does not have Eastern, but has the word East. So if I type in the word E, we should see the salvia East Fry's land, at least I think that's what it is. That one will be gone when I press T. Uh, likely the others will stay because the others have the whole word Eastern, where this is the only one that has the word East. So let's go ahead and press T and confirm we get one fewer results the next time around. Probably not a big surprise here. So E, E, S, T, E, and breakpoint hits. Oh, you know what? And I forgot to hit play on that last one. Let me go ahead and play that through and then we'll catch the breakpoint again this time around. Okay, so this is E-A-S-T-E. -E. Let's simply confirm that by, by crossing over and look at the term, should be E-S-T-E, -E, and there we go. And we'll go ahead and step over a few more times. And again, some it's going to add, others it's not going to add. We go down to suggestions, we go to run, and then run to line. Okay. And then we'll right size so we can take a look at the collection that's going to be returned. And it should be slightly smaller. And sure enough, it is. You notice it went from about 16 to about 14. And I didn't look at every single one carefully. But nonetheless, we should no longer see the east plant that we saw earlier. As a matter of fact, you see everything here has the word eastern in it. So it's going to keep 
It's going to maintain this list of returns likely until we type Eastern and then space R and then we'll get a lesser result. But nonetheless, the more important thing we see here is that it is indeed skipping line 176 and 177. So it is not going out and fetching new each time, which is very important. Let's go ahead and let it go. And one more test I want to do. Let me go ahead and highlight, delete, and now let's type in WES. So kind of like Western. This should trigger a new fetch of that data. Let's confirm that indeed it's, it is going to go trigger a new fetch of data. It's not going to use Eastern all over again. So we click on Eclipse and we see that we have the breakpoint going. Term should be WES and it is. The length is exactly three. It's going to recache a new first three characters key and it's going to run out to the network and grab the data one more time. This time it's going to be a different set of data. So if I take a look at the plant DTO and the variables tab, let's take a look. Well, looks like we might not have that. Oh, that's right, it's going to be here. So all plants. So if we take it all, a look at all plants now, you'll notice that we have about 14, 15 plants, uh, 15 including the zero plant. But these will not be Eastern plants. Now you see this is West African rubber tree, Western silver wattle or acacia. Uh, and then we get on southern white, southwestern white pine. So you see everything that we have here has that word west in it. And sure enough, it has fetched a new collection. We'll go ahead and choose play. And I'll tell you what, we'll choose play. And I did promise we'd take that breakpoint off. We'll disable the breakpoint. And we will keep typing. So we'll say west. And you notice that with the breakpoint out, without me tabbing back and forth, sure enough, we're able to type and western silver and it is indeed auto-completing based on that term. So in this video, we've seen how to do one fetch per minimum character occurrence and then use an in-memory copy from then on. There are other approaches that we can take. One idea that's probably a good idea, provided that we're not stealing data or doing any kind of copyright violation, is to simply synchronize these plants in the background with a local data source so that we can go against a database for that first hit instead of going across the internet. Anytime we're making a reach out of our application and across the network, there's a chance for failure. There's also a chance that the format that we're reading has changed on the server side and we're not aware of it. So it's a bit safer to have a local copy. Another thing we can do is use a caching framework like the cacheable annotation EHCache, although that one gets a little bit tricky when you're doing an autocomplete. Nonetheless, the general user experience guidelines are that autocomplete data should come from a local source so that we get a nice responsive look and feel to the user. So I hope this video has been helpful. In a following video, we're going to take a look at how to not just autocomplete based on the name, but also get a primary key ID that's not as meaningful to the user, but is easier for us to do some one-to-many relationships, some foreign key relationships in the database. For example, you see if I start typing West, we get a key that appears to the left here. We want to be able to take that and put that somewhere where the user won't necessarily see it, but where we will be able to access it. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.